I absolutely hate PTFE braided hose. My hands are tore up. My fingers are tired. I stabbed myself a bunch of times in my leg too. Listen, PTFE, I don't think I'm gonna do it again. What's going on guys? Back for the second day. And today we're gonna continue where we left off. Today I went to this place, uh, Profad Performance. I needed more fittings, <laughs> shocker. Needless to say, I got more fittings. I feel like this is a never ending story of fittings. This is all we need to do this. I'll walk you through it real quick. I have my line, my PTFE line. I got some WD-40. I got a wrench. I got an adjustable AN wrench and our fitting. I do have some black electrical tape to make sure that this thing's not backing off. We're gonna put together one of these lines. I'm gonna put this whole deal together because I don't know how much I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna put one line on, run the line completely underneath the car back to where it needs to go. And then I will run this dual channel with our E85 sensor. That's the plan for today, because this is, I think, the most complicated part of it. And if I run the E85 sensor, I'm probably gonna run it under the, the chassis in the stock spot where the fuel lines went. There's a nice little channel that goes up underneath these BMWs. So I'm gonna use that. All right, so now I have the fitting, the first fitting done. Looks kind of like this, it's a pain, but you know what, it's done. So I'm gonna actually you know, thread this onto the fuel rail and tuck all this line down into the car. So let's go ahead and take this to the car. I bet it doesn't even like fit in there. I'm gonna try to feed this. It's PTFE and it's really hard to work with. You put one twist in, it's like, nah bro, we don't wanna do that. This is my feed line. The idea is that because this is my feed line, this is my return line, I can just bunch them both up together going at down and out. <laughs> I'm a mess. I've officially mounted the feed line. Now I can move on mounting the E85 sensor. Right there. Oh, I'm so dirty. That car is so dirty. I'm a raccoon too, look at this. Oh, this may break out the good freaking face wash. This is the, the billet mount. It's a, like a two piece design and it has a dash 10. So there isn't gonna be any flow restrictions. We're just gonna put the E85 sensor into here. And then we have some uh, some fittings here, but we have some AR ORBs that's gonna go on. Literally, I'm just gonna mount it the front side of this vehicle. I'm gonna cut the line. I'm gonna mount this. This can kind of go anywhere you want and how you want it. What is going on, guys? Back again, the third day. Yesterday, the camera died, but today I have the entire feed line done. I'm just gonna kind of show that to you. I was gonna work on the E85 sensor mount, and I actually got that all buttoned up last night. This is the Motion Raceworks Billet E85 sensor mount. And just like, I end up using some nut certs to the actual um, chassis itself. But for now, the entire feed side is done. I have to put another clamp down there, but everything else is pretty much done. I'm gonna try to do the return line today. I'm gonna try to do the fuel module lines. Other than the return line, there's only a couple fittings left to, to mount. Oh, I gotta mount the fuel filter too. So I'm gonna get right into it. Okay, let me break this down for you. I absolutely hate PTFE braided hose. My hands are tore up. My fingers are tired. I stabbed myself a bunch of times in my leg too. Listen, PTFE, I don't think I'm gonna do it again. If I had the choice again, I would return it all and just run some like Fragola braid that's like E85 capable and just call it a day because this is becoming such a mess. More fittings, nothing bends right, the fittings are a pain. It just is not fun. I've had to go to the store multiple times, spend more money on fittings. So this is probably one of the biggest worries I had going into this. 
I decided to be fancy and bougie and go with some PTFE lined hose. And I thought it was going to be a little bit better uh, longevity with the hose. So I got it. Little did I know, because this is also the first time I've actually messed with PTFE, that it doesn't move quite as well. I figured there wasn't going to be like the same type of bend in uh, compared to the braid, but this is like no give whatsoever. And it's making it extremely, extremely difficult when I'm routing it down the car, up over the gas tank, down over, underneath, over. It's just a mess. So I just had to order more PTFE hose and I had to get more 90 fittings because guess what? You can't turn them. So now I have to run 90s on everything. That's a little bit more pain in the butt, but hopefully this will eliminate my problem and we can move forward with the car because I had to order six PTFE 90s more in addition. So there's that. Just problem after problem with this uh, fuel system. Hopefully I can get those in tomorrow. I thought I had enough fittings today. Guess what? I don't. So hopefully tomorrow I can get this kind of situated and move on. All right, I got a lot done. I got a lot, lot, lot done. But I think I'm calling for the day because I've run out of fittings. Let me show you what we did today. So I made this line here. This is our, to our fuel pressure regulator. This is return to fuel pressure regulator. Pressure regulator down and out. Here is our feed. Our feed goes in the same line. I'm going to zip tie them or P-clamp them to the firewall. Stay away from the, uh, headers so i got most of them run i still have to do this line actually goes to that fuel filter that fuel filter goes there and that goes from the oem tank that's our feed from our oem ta oem tank to our surge tank and then this is from our fuel pressure regulator on a return line this is our fuel pump feed that goes down there and then that one is our return to our oem tank that's going to be this line here to a return to an like an overflow so I've kind of done as much as I could do today. I ordered six more 90s and six more straight fittings. Five more feet of PTFE as well. This has become quite the process, but as you can see, it is coming along pretty well. What's up, guys? Day four, maybe? So we left off and I didn't have any more fittings. I needed some more fittings. I do have everything to do the fuel tank. I actually still don't know how this evaporation charcoal canister nonsense works, but I doubt I'm even going to mess with it. I'm probably just gonna cap that line. Cap this line right here, and then use this as a primary vent out, just out and down to the ground if I need to, just put a hose and vent it out and then try to retain the factory fill. I'm not sure actually how that's gonna work. I have removed the fuel pump. It's literally just screw it off and pull it out. What we're gonna attempt to do is attach one of these through the fuel tank and then attach the original piece from the fuel pump. But since I have the other fuel pump coming with the actual new tube, I'm not gonna attach this current one. So right now I'm just going to remove the old fitting and then drill a giant hole, put this fitting in there, tighten it up on both sides on the module. And I'm actually gonna do it to the same thing to that side. We're gonna run some 90s out and it's gonna to go to our surge tank. We're gonna just mock it up because I think we're gonna run this one today because I don't think I have enough. So we'll run this one today. And just like that, fuel level send, and it'll 90 off. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this side. I still have to take it out and drill it out and hopefully not make that mistake twice because where this is, I don't know if there's a shelf in there, but I guess we'll find out. To take these off, it's pretty simple. You literally you can just, oh, this one's already loose. You just literally just hit this with a screwdriver. I probably already loosened it. Then we can pull it out with a screwdriver. 
get my screwdriver in there. There we go. Pop her on out. Now this module is nothing but a crossover tank. This is what it looks like. This is our Dash 8 fitting um, through the original uh, modules. So there's one, there's two. I'm skeptical that this one is going to be too high. All right, guys, so this is the end of the fuel system. It came out really, really good. Um, this DW 3.5 surge tank, I have all the lines. This is my fuel filter that's coming from the actual tank side. Comes up, fuel filter, goes in to feed. This feed feeds the motor. These are both return lines. It came out pretty good. If I say so myself, the DW 3.5 surge tank. I end up putting a lift pump, a DW 400 lift pump, and a DW 350 inline tank. If I decide to run a second pump or I need a second pump, I'll go ahead and put it in there. But for right now, this is kind of where we're at. If you enjoyed today's video, I need you to go like the video, comment down below what you want to see on the vehicle, comment something, anything. It helps the channel out a lot. And go ahead and sub. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.